All right, so here's our diagram here, looking at the pancreas as a water tower. All right, so you'll see here, think of the water tower as the pancreas, it feeds down into your body, okay? Now this blue line at the top, the water level, is the amount of beta cells that you have. Not necessarily insulin, right? Think beta cell mass specifically, not insulin just yet, okay? So a full water tower is our goal. That means we're making enough insulin to properly water the body with insulin. Now, when you think about the inflammation that type one and type two diabetics go through, those are breaks in the structure of the, the tank itself, right? So, you know, whatever, whatever you think the, the nature of the inflammation is, you know, what we're eating, the fact that we're not um, exercising enough, you know, you have all of these little nicks edging away at that beta cell mass, right? That's the inflammation that is killing off the beta cells, all right? So when that happens, as those beta cells go away, now that level falls. Okay, so the body sees that. The pancreas feels that, right? There's not, uh, you know, there's not as much volume here pressure, pressurizing that, uh, that water feed into the body. So what are some of the symptoms we're experiencing here once that beta cell mass level starts to fall? Circulating insulin levels are going to increase, right? Because which makes more insulin? A full tank of beta cells or a half tank? A full tank. So now that we're at a half tank, these, the, all these beta cells here are saying, oh shit, we have to do the work of a full tank now because the body's like, hey, you know, where's all the, where's all the beta, where's all the beta cell mass? You know, our blood sugar, our blood sugar levels are increasing we need you to increase your insulin output. So these existing beta cells boost their production. You've got more circulating insulin levels. Now, those inflammatory markers keep coming. They just keep coming, right? So you've got all these little day-by-day -day nicks just eating away at that water level. So when that happens, Now, uh-oh, that level just keeps getting lower and lower and lower, right? So these beta cells are worried. They're fatigued. And yet, with those circulating insulin levels ever increasing, now you've got a third of that water tank doing the work of a full tank as well as the fact that those insulin receptors are being glycated and altered so that even though the insulin levels are increased, the cells themselves can't actually take it in. So what does all of that increased circulating insulin do? It starts to store fat, right? So it's, it's twofold. You're, you're being, you're being, you're being affected on two fronts because your beta cell mass is decreasing. The existing beta cell mass that you have is overproducing insulin to make up for the fact that the water in the water tower keeps dropping, as well as the fact that the insulin that you are producing isn't working because the inflammation is affecting the sensitivity to the insulin that you are overproducing, okay? Um, 
and it's just it's just this big old negative feedback loop or positive feedback loop rather where the more insulin you produce because it's not being accepted by the cell the more fat is being stored the more fat that's being stored the more you become desensitized the more desensitized you become the more insulin you produce the more insulin produced the more fat you create and it's just this vicious vicious cycle now I mentioned that this is all happening on a scale, right? Now, if you let a type 2 diabetic, by my logic, if you let a type 2 diabetic be a type 2 diabetic long enough to the point where they reach a critical threshold, which is this dotted line, this black dotted line that I have here at the bottom, that dotted line, and I hope you can see it well, So towards the bottom of the tank, right? Let's just call it an eighth of a tank. There is a critical threshold where there's just not enough water to feed the body anymore, right? That's type one diabetes. Type one diabetes is where you just simply do not have enough water in the tower to feed the body, right? So if a type two diabetic just keeps on going through all of that inflammation, and eventually that beta cell mass reaches that critical threshold, I would argue that a type two diabetic would then become type one and would become completely dependent on exogenous insulin. Now, why does that not happen? I can't pretend, you know, I don't have any evidence. I don't know that it ever has happened. I would argue that that's because all of the health conditions that arise from the inflammation that brought you from a half tank of water down to a, a full tank of water down to a half tank or a quarter tank was enough to make everything else bad enough for your body to quit, right? Because, you know, type two diabetics, you've got heart, you've got heart problems, you've got liver issues, you've got kidney issues, you've got eye issues, you're losing your feet, you're losing your toes. Obesity itself makes everything, you know, makes your health just impossible, right? So it's not the fact that type two can't develop to type one, it's that your body dies before that transition ever makes, makes it there. So then let's flip it on its head. Why are type one diabetics not type two before they get to type one? And that requires a little bit more speculation. But if you think about it, we all enter this life, this diabetic life, um, at different points of inflammation from an inherited standpoint, right? If you know, people make the argument that um, diabetes is genetic, you have the genes for diabetes, then you get it. But what I would argue is more influential in your development of the diabetes is the cellular environment that you inherit, right? So I would argue that a type one diabetic is inheriting significantly more inflammatory conditions, inflammatory markers that just bypass that whole process of, you know, Increase circulating insulin, you know, long long term blood sugar level increases, um, and an increase in fat cell mass. We all know that most type one diabetics don't go through that fat cell mass stage of um, of gaining weight. But so you know, I'll use my my family as an example. So my mother has had gut issues her whole life. Her whole family, ulcer, you know, stress, gallbladder issues. Uh, my, my dad's side has a bunch of iron metabolism issues, stress, white hair, lipid peroxidation, liver spots. These are all huge, huge signs of chronic inflammation, right? And as someone who was literally made by mom and dad, I inherited all of these kind of conditions that 
led to this incredible, incredibly high baseline level of inflammation that did not take nearly as long to take action. And, you know, it could be that, I mean, my mom literally is a type 2 diabetic, so she is already dealing with a compromised level of beta cell mass, I would argue. So I started with very little, had an inflammatory background that just pushed me past that critical threshold into a state where I did not have enough beta cell mass to sustain life, hence type 1 diabetes.